Hey everybody, it is Dak here from the Ed Boys, and welcome to my Guardians of the Rift guide. Guardians of the Rift is the runecrafting minigame that was recently added to OSRS. It is a much more enjoyable way to make runecrafting gains, and there are some unique runecrafting rewards that you can get from the Guardians of the Rift. In this guide, I will go over the requirements for Guardians, which is very minimal. Then we'll discuss the mechanics of the minigame before going over a typical full run. Afterwards, we'll go over the expected GP and XP that you can get from Guardians of the Rift, and finally, we'll talk about the rewards. You do need 27 runecrafting to do Guardians of the Rift, but that is a technicality. Uh, you need 10 runecrafting to do Temple of the Eye, which is a quest required for Guardians of the Rift, and then you get enough runecrafting XP that you'll jump to 27 anyways, and you can go right into the Guardians of the Rift minigame. 27 runecrafting is the minimum, but the higher your runecrafting level, the better runes you're going to be able to make. Uh, this is going to increase your XP per hour, your GP per hour, and your reward points will be affected pretty heavily, so higher runecrafting is going to be helpful, but also just grinding a few hours of runecrafting here, even at low level, you're going to get a pretty good runecraft level kind of quickly. Uh, you also want to get your essence pouches for this grind. The small pouch is obtained from completing the Enter the Abyss mini quest, which is great for getting starting runecrafting XP. The medium pouch is a reward from the Temple of the Eye quest that you had to do for this mini game, so you should already have that one. The large and giant pouches can be obtained as uncommon drops from monsters within the Abyss. You can also get your small and medium pouches here, but you don't have to. Uh, there's also a colossal pouch, which is a reward from this mini game. We'll talk about it more later. These pouches are all very crucial to getting more XP per hour at Guardians of the Rift. You can collect your pouches before you have the required runecrafting level to use them. Let's go over the basic mechanics of the minigame. First, let's look at the interface in the top left corner. This top bar shows the current Guardian's power, which is pretty much just a progress bar. To make it go up, you have to give the Guardian some Guardian Stones, which is going to be the main thing that you're making during the minigame. There will constantly be abyssal creatures trying to attack the Great Guardian. There's barriers that you can charge to protect the Guardian, but if they get through the barrier and they do attack him, that's how the progress bar goes down. If the bar hits zero, the group loses the match and you will restart in 30 seconds. If the bar hits 100%, then everybody wins. You get a nice chunk of runecrafting XP and some reward points to pull cool stuff from the rewards guardian outside. Under the progress bar, you can see which two portal guardians are open, or in other words, which altars that you can make guardian stones at currently. Under that, you're going to see how much energy that you've gained during the round in both elemental and catalytic. Every 100 energy is going to get you one reward point at the end. Any points left over do give you a chance to round up. So with this energy that we're looking at here, we would get one point in elemental, and we have a 45% chance of getting two points. And then I got three points in catalytic currently, with an 11% chance to get another point in catalytic. You need one reward point in both categories to claim a reward from the rewards guardian. If you don't understand catalytic and elemental, it is very straightforward. Air, water, earth, and fire runes, those are all the elemental runes. Every other rune here is catalytic runes. There are also combination runes, but we're going to talk about that more in the rewards points section. This right here shows you how many Rift Guardians are in the room and the max that you can have, which is really going to be 10 just about every time unless you're running like a very small team or you're soloing. And we'll talk about these Rift Guardians very soon. And finally, there's an indicator here that shows you there's a portal in the room that can be used to teleport to any of the huge Guardian remains. There's kind of a, a couple portals that you teleport through if you include like teleporting to the altars. Anytime that I just talk about quote unquote the portal, I'm talking about one of these portals. If any of these things in the interface don't make any sense yet, that's fine. We really haven't gone over any of the actual mechanics yet. Let's go over how to make guardian stones. First, you need guardian fragments. These can be obtained from mining remains around the room. The guardian parts and the guardian remains each give one to three fragments each time you mine them. But if you have 56 agility, you can take this shortcut on the east side of the arena to mine from the large guardian remains, which give you two to four fragments each time that you mine. Occasionally, a portal will spawn in the room. I brought it up before with that indicator in the top left. You can use that portal to teleport to the huge guardian remains on the west side of the room. Mining these remains gives you guardian essence instead of fragments, so you actually get to skip the next step of the process when you mine these remains. Once you have the fragments, you can take them to this table and turn them into guardian essence. Guardian essence can be used to make guardian stones, and just like pure essence or rune essence, you can fill your essence pouches with it, so you want to stack up on a bunch of them before you head to the altar. When your pouches and inventory are full of guardian essence, you can go to the altar, check on the top left to see which altars are open. These send you to the main game altars, so you'll need to do whichever quests that are required for that rune so like lost city is required to make cosmic runes here uh, you do have a choice between a catalytic altar and an elemental altar you need one type of each reward point to pull rewards from the rewards guardian so you generally want to keep these even uh, picking higher tier runes will result in better rune crafting XP and then different runes are going to charge your cells with more or less power which does change how much XP you're getting too we're going to be getting into that very soon though so you can head to the altar
altar, you make a bunch of guardian stones using the essence that you had, and you'll also make a bunch of that rune, just like if you brought pure essence with you. You have a chance to make a portal talisman when you're here. If you do, then you can use that portal talisman to get back to this altar, even when the great guardian hasn't opened up one of those portal guardians to get here. That can be super convenient if you can't make all the runes. Let's say you can't make blood runes because you don't have the level or you haven't done the quest, and you have like a nature talisman with you, and you need to go to the catalytic altar, and only the blood altar's open. You can use that nature portal talisman to head into the nature altar instead. Once you've made your guardian stones, head back to the temple, click on the great guardian to use your guardian stones. Uh, you're gonna get some points based off of which rune that you made, and it'll make some progress towards finishing the round. Now you just repeat the process until the round is over. At this small table near the entrance, you can grab uncharged cells. A charged cell can be used to spawn a rift guardian. These guardians slowly make their way up to the front and they attack the abyssal creatures that are spawning. You can also use a charged cell to upgrade and heal the barriers that are holding back abyssal creatures. To charge the uncharged cell, you just need to take it to an altar like you would do with the essence. You don't even technically have to take any essence with you. If you just have uncharged cells at the altar, it will charge it up when you use it. So you just want to take a stack of 10 of these uncharged cells at the beginning of the game, and then every time that you make guardian essence into guardian stones, you're going to get a charged cell too. There are four different tiers of cells. You have weak cells from the air, mind, and body altar. Also, you can pick them up from the table at the entrance. Uh, there are medium cells with the water, cosmic, and chaos altar. The strong cells come from the earth, nature, and law altar. And the overcharged cells come from the fire, death, and blood altars. It is important to use your cells after every trip on either making a rift guardian or repairing a barrier. If not enough players are doing this, it is very easy for the team to just lose the round. So if you're losing the round a lot, make sure that you're using your cells after each run. Last thing I want to bring up for just straight up mechanics is the Abyssal Lantern. This is a reward from the Guardians of the Rift minigame, and it can be worn in your shield slot. Uh, it's purely cosmetic until you charge it with logs. It will give you a nice boost during the minigame, depending on what type of log you charged it with. Here's the full list of all of those different benefits. Uh, the Redwood Logs are the most convenient, giving a combination of a few effects. You'll get 5% more reward points and 5% more runes. Most importantly, though, your pouches are no longer going to degrade during the minigame, so you don't have to keep calling that Dark Wizard. U Logs are a great bonus, giving the 10% contribution points, and Magic logs for 10% more runes is not that bad either. The lantern is rare, so you may need to do a lot of Guardians of the Rift before you get it, but it is a nice boost once you've gotten one. Now that you know the mechanics of everything in the room, let's talk about the gear and inventory, then we'll go over a full run. Here's like a starting setup for anybody who hasn't gotten any of the rewards yet. Graceful is just a technicality here. You're not running the entire time, and you get some run energy when you turn in the Guardian Stones, so you could wear Prospector to get slightly more mining XP, but that is extremely minimal. If you're low agility level, you might run out of energy more, but if you're low agility level, then you also don't have your Graceful outfit yet. Varrock armor does give a chance to mine double fragments, so it's worth having it on before you get the raiments of the eye pieces. In the long run, it's not going to matter that much, though. The crystal pickaxe is the best pickaxe, but honestly, it's not needed, especially in the mass world. If you're using a crystal pickaxe, don't forget to wear your elven signet in the ring slot. A dragon pickaxe is still really good here, and honestly, a rune pickaxe is going to be fine. Here's what I'm wearing at Guardians of the Rift at this point. Uh, I've got my Rames of the Eye outfit on. Wearing the outfit gives 60% bonus runes when runecrafting, though you won't get any more runecrafting XP. It's still a big boost in GP per hour. This does get rid of the Varrock armor and the chest slot, but it's far more worth it to have the Raymond's piece. I'm using a rune pickaxe here because I'm grinding this on my hardcore Iron Man and I am afraid to upgrade. Uh, I do have the Abyssal Lantern in the shield slot, currently charged with redwood logs so that I don't have to worry about repairing my pouches. If I had the runecrafting skill cape already, then I would be wearing that because you don't have to repair your pouches when you have the runecrafting skill cape on, and then I put you logs in there for the bonus points instead. If you do have your celestial ring from uh, mining shooting stars, it does have an invisible plus four mining boost on it. It'll help you with mining fragments just a little bit, but it is a boost. Uh, here's your inventory setup. You do have to bring a chisel with you. And then your essence pouches, those are huge for speeding up games. You gotta have these too. Uh, if you have the colossal pouch, it's a lot more convenient. And the rune pouch there, it has cosmics, airs, and astral runes. I'm on the lunar spellbook so that I can call the dark wizard and have my pouches repaired. At this point though, I did pull the abyssal lantern. So technically I do not need that rune pouch anymore. But if your pouches are still degrading, you gotta bring that with you. Finally, let's go over a full run. Uh, there is a Runelite plugin in the plugin hub to highlight a few things during the round that you might want to try out, but I will not be using it during this run. First, you go ahead and grab 10 uncharged cells from the table and go ahead and grab a weak cell from the table right below it. Uh, you don't have to grab a weak cell and charge up a barrier every time. If you are in the mass worlds and there's a lot of people already charging up the barriers, you should be good to go. But if you have a few rounds in a row where the Great Guardian seems to keep getting destroyed, it's most likely because nobody is doing the barriers right off the bat. So it's pretty good practice just to take a weak cell, head up to the barriers, and wait there till the round starts. Once the round begins, go ahead and charge up whatever barrier you are standing at and then head over to whatever 
whatever remains you can mine if you have the 56 agility head over to the large guardian remains and you can pretty much mine for just about the full two minutes there's gonna be like 15 to 20 seconds left when you could run away uh, the amount of essence that you need is gonna depend on like which pouches that you're using and then what mining stuff that you have with you if you have low mining and like a bad pickaxe you won't get as many fragments so you might have to be here for a while or you might not even get all of them that you need I usually go for 160 fragments and then I'm gonna end up mining a little bit during the game but there's just a little bit of downtime where you get a chance to mine a few extras so at 160 fragments I am heading over to the workbench I'm gonna fill up one inventory of guardian essence and as you can see right now the altars have been opened and we have 10 seconds left until they're gonna be changing uh, when they're gonna change for the second time that's when the first portal to the huge guardian remains is gonna open so I'm gonna make this one inventory and then we're gonna head into whatever altars are opened for the second round of them which right now is air and blood unfortunately I have not done sins of the father on my hardcore Iron Man so we're just doing air runes which actually makes a weak cell to start it means I'm pretty useless when it comes to helping out with the barrier here compared to like a strong or an overcharged cell which you would get overcharged from the blood altar but as you can see all the barriers are red or green right now so everybody's really kicking ass on the barriers and it doesn't matter that much by the time that I run back charge up that barrier use my guardian stones this portal has opened I can head to the south portal after depositing my runes in the pool and we can go ahead and fill up on some guardian essence once my pouch and my inventory is full, I'm heading back out, going to whichever altar I can. Of course, the blood altar is open again, so we're hanging out at the earth altar instead. We're going to make all of these runes and guardian stones. This time, we have a full pouch and a full inventory. The one run we made at the air altar was just the inventory, so we get a lot of guardian stones this time. And uh, we just used the portal to mine, so that means we have enough time to work at the workbench right now. So I'm just going to deposit my runes and go right to the workbench instead of turning in my guardian stones yet. I'm going to turn these in on the way to the next altar. Once the essence pouch is full, I'm heading up there to use my guardian stones on the great guardian, and I want to use my overcharged cell on one of the barriers. All the barriers are looking solid, so I'm just using it on the one closest to me. I'm actually not going to head to the cosmic altar, even though I could use some catalytic energy. The cosmic altar is a very long run, and I, I just don't like it, so I'm headed over to the earth altar. I have enough cosmic runes on my Iron Man that I'm okay with not making cosmic runes, so I try to skip that altar. We make a bunch of guardian stones, and we got a charged cell. Now, we didn't use a portal to mine last time. We used the workbench, meaning a portal is coming in hot soon so I'm first gonna mine some guardian remains while I wait for that portal to spawn you're pretty much alternating inventories of either the portal and the huge remains to fill up or using the workbench there's the portal which means I have a little bit of time to get into it I'm gonna mine a few extra remains go use my guardian stones on the great guardian in the center and use my cell to not only help out with the round but then empty up some envy space before I head into that portal we still got 10 seconds to get in there and it's right there so plenty of time to go fill up the inventory with some guardian essence from the huge guardian remains and once we've filled up the inventory in the pouch here, you can see we're already in that same pattern. We have a full inventory of Guardian Essence to work with. I'm going to go to the Nature Altar, which is right here, make some Guardian Stones and another cell. Since I just used a portal and the huge Guardian remains to fill up on Guardian Essence, I get to use the Workbench this time. It just alternates like Portal or Workbench to fill up your inventory. So I'm going right over here to deposit my runes and then just using the Workbench to fill up again. So that is pretty much the gist of it. You're just using either the Workbench or the huge Guardian remains to fill your inventory with Essence alternating between the two of them and then making a run to the altar to make some guardian stones and a cell use the guardian stones use the cell and repeat if another portal to the huge guardian remains opens up right before the round is going to end you might as well go into that portal so that you can start the next round at the huge guardian remains to fill up your inventory but other than that that is the full run if you still have any questions on how just a full run at the guardians of the rift goes then be sure to leave those in the comment section below but now we're going to move on to the rewards and whatnot First, we'll talk XP and GP rates from Guardians of the Rift. The XP an hour that you get is clearly going to vary depending on your rune crafting level. As you get higher rune crafting, you're going to be able to make better runes, which does give better XP. You're also going to get more reward points when you can use all of the altars. And at the end of the game, you get a nice chunk of rune crafting XP. And the amount of XP you get depends on your rune crafting level. So higher rune crafting does equate to much better XP rates. The range of XP goes anywhere from 20k to 60k XP an hour. Right as you start Guardians of the Rift, you'll be getting bad rates if you're bare minimum level and if you're just learning the flow of things. And clearly you don't have the colossal pouch or the abyssal lantern with the max setup always using the best runes and trying to make those overcharged cells you can push a little bit past 60k rune crafting an hour that is pretty max efficiency so it's not reasonable to think that you're going to do like a full 99 rune crafting grind at above 60k xp an hour but 60k is not necessarily the maximum 
I've been landing more like 50k of runecrafting XP an hour on my Hardcore Iron Man, but I haven't done Morning's End Part 2 or Sins of the Father, so I can't make Death and Blood runes. To actively get 45 to 50k XP an hour at mid to high runecrafting levels is very doable. If you're getting slower XP rates and you're getting less reward points than you think you should, you might be messing something up or you're still just at a low runecrafting level overall. The GP an hour also does depend on your runecrafting level. Clearly, you're going to make more money per hour if you can make the expensive runes like Deaths and Bloods. You also make 60% bonus runes when you're wearing the Raiments of the Eye, which is a massive increase in profit. At low levels with no outfit, you don't make much money here, but if you can at least get to like nature runes, you'll make a few hundred K an hour. With all the runes unlocked and max pace runs, you can get like a mill profit per hour if you include little bits of runes that you get from the reward pool too. Blood runes really are a massive chunk of your profit if you're just focusing on going to the blood altar anytime you can makes a big difference because they are very expensive. Uh, the prices of runes can go up and down depending on when you watch this video. If you want to max out your profit, you definitely want to hit up the blood altar as often as possible though. We've talked about the unique rewards a couple of times in the reward points pretty vaguely. Let's actually go over how the loot works at Guardians of the Rift. To grab a reward from the rewards guardian, you need one elemental point and one catalytic point. During the game, every 100 energy gives you one point in that category, and then any energy over 100 goes towards a chance at another point. For example, if you had 350 elemental energy at the end of a game, you would get three elemental points and a 50% chance at a fourth. It's very easy to keep your points even, so don't overthink that strategy of which points should I be trying to get during the round. Just make the best runes that you can, and then once you find that you have a bunch of one point but not another you can just do a full round where you only go for catalytic or elemental whichever one that you need now it's also worth pointing out that combination runes can be made for a little bit extra elemental points to make combination runes you do want to bring some extra stuff with you uh, you need to be wearing a binding necklace and it's nice to bring an extra plus you need to bring magic and bue runes with you which are fire water and astral runes if you hit each elemental altar and you make combination runes you're going to be making poly elemental guardian stones which give 50 percent more elemental points so if you need to catch up on elemental points you can take advantage of these to get it done very quickly it is a little bit more clunky than making normal runes but honestly it's pretty easy to do a few rounds of combo runes and catch up on those points very fast for the most part, you're just going to get runes and occasionally talismans from the rewards guardian. There's a pretty solid chunk of high level runes like bloods and deaths, so the rewards are a nice bonus to your profit. Sometimes you will pull an intricate pouch. These will more often than not just have some solid runes in them. You can pull a couple of unique collection log items that don't have a lot of use other than being cosmetic. You can also pull the dragon spear or the shield left half, which is nice for iron men, and there's a 1 in 10 chance for a hard clue scroll. There are some unique rewards from the rewards guardian too. First of all, we have the abyssal pearls. These can be spent on the rewards shop for some other rewards. The pearls are pulled in chunks of 10 to 20 at a time, and even though they're a common drop at 1 in 7, you're going to end up needing a lot of them for the outfit, so they are nice to pull. Let's go ahead and look at that full reward shop. So the main thing in the shop is the Raiments of the Eye outfit. Each piece gives a 10% boost in runes crafted, and then an extra boost from the full outfit gives you 60% when you have the full thing. Now, the full outfit costs 1,350 Abyssal Pearls. You can buy talismans from the shop, including the Blood Talisman, for access to the True Blood Altar. Uh, the Ring of Elements costs 400 Abyssal Pearls. It can be charged with 1 law rune and one of each elemental rune per charge. The ring has four teleports on it, one for each of the elemental altars. Lastly, we have the Guardian's Eye. This can be used on your Rift Guardian rune crafting pet to give it a transmog option to look like the Great Guardian instead. Next, from the Rewards Guardian, we have the Abyssal Needle. Uh, this is a 1 in 300 drop. If you have all four of these small, medium, large, and giant essence pouches, you can use this needle on them to sew them into a Colossal Pouch. The Colossal Pouch holds up to 40 essence, which is 10 more than the other four pouches together. Plus, it only takes up one inventory space, which is insanely convenient. Uh, you can't get the other four pouches and the Colossal at the same time. If you do lose the pouch, you have to go get the other four pouches back, but you can use a normal needle on the Rewards Guardian to get your Abyssal Needle back and sew them together. The Abyssal Lantern is another unique pull that you can get from the rewards guardian uh, this is a one in 700 pull and it can be wielded in the shield slot the lantern only provides boost during the mini game it's not going to help out with regular rune crafting i talked about this lantern earlier you can charge it with different types of logs to get some unique boosts uh, most conveniently being the redwoods which make your pouches not degrade and you get bonus points and bonus runes once you get the abyssal lantern you will see a significant increase in your guardians of the rift gains you can get an abyssal die from the rewards guardian at a one in 400 pace for any random die uh, these can be used on a piece of the raiments of the eye outfit to recolor it though not the boots those can't be recolored if you get a color that you don't want you can swap it out at apprentice felix who is on the second floor of the wizard's tower guardians of the rift does come with a pet the abyssal protector is an ugly little guy that you can pull at a one in four thousand drop rate which is very rare 
I believe that is everything I wanted to talk about for the Guardians of the Rift guide, everybody. This guide did get kind of long, but there is kind of a lot you can talk about with this minigame. It's pretty straightforward, but there's still a lot of details to it. If you still have any questions about Guardians of the Rift, be sure to let me know in the comments section below, and I will get back to you as soon as possible. If you enjoyed this video or you just got some useful information, be sure to like and subscribe for more content. I do stream on Twitch, which is linked on the screen and in the description. I am also on Twitter and have a Discord, which are linked in the description. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and best of luck on your Guardians of the Rift grind.